I'm not gonna lie, lately I haven't been feeling video games. This generation hasn't been the best, and not many games released have piqued my interest, besides series that I've already been accustomed to. But the memes, the memes were pretty good. Like that Arthur meme, or the, or the cat memes, you know, those, those are always good. There was also... Hey, hold on, this, this song, this song is pretty good. Oh, what's this from? Yakuza. Never heard of that before. Are these games good? Let me just... Whoa, what's this guy's deal? Why, why did he answer that phone like that? Okay, I'll be honest. Bakamitai is the sole reason I was ever really interested in the Yakuza series to begin with. And at some point, I had to start playing the games. But being an Xbox player since I was basically a fetus, I thought it would be a long time before I could. I even thought about going to the nearest exchange, buying a PS2, and a copy of the original game. And I hate the exchange. Luckily, the Xbox Game Pass was only a dollar for a while, and it had every single Yakuza game except Six and Like a Dragon. So I looked into what the Kiwamis were and which game to start at. Starting with Zero sounded like a good idea, but I decided with starting with Kiwami would be best. If you're not familiar with it, it's a remake of the original game, but with the engine from Zero. Probably one of the best remakes I've ever seen. I mean, they remade the cutscenes almost one to one. I mean, honestly, I love Halo, but it's definitely better than Combat Evolved Anniversary, and I think nothing's better than Halo. Before I begin talking about the game, I just want to say that this isn't really a review. I think those are kind of lame. I'm not really going to talk about the gameplay either, mainly the story. I will say it's fun though, and you should play it. My thing is that I play video games for the gameplay second and the story first to be honest. Kiryu Kazuma is the lieutenant advisor of the Dojima family. A well-respected Yakuza and a fucking beast, he is known around Kamurocho as the Dragon of Dojima because he gets shit done. Kiryu is a very intense man, but at heart he's a kind soul. The game begins with Kiryu visiting his friends Yumi and Nishikiyama after collecting money from people who owed it to the Dojima family. After seeing Yumi wearing a ring he bought for her, he remembers everything he went through to get the ring. Buying the ring, it being stolen, tracking the ring down and eventually getting it back from a pawn shop. Kiryu may be a Yakuza, but he would do anything for his friends. This is proven when Dojima Sohai, patriarch of the Dojima family, is killed by Nishiyama when he tried to take advantage of Yumi. Kiryu tells Nishikiyama to leave with Yumi. Feeling guilt, Nishikiyama tells him it was his fault, so he'll take the fall. But Kiryu can't let that happen. Nishikiyama's sister is in the hospital. He knows that he has to be there for her. See, Kiryu finds him trembling and yells at him to leave, so he does. Kiryu spends 10 years in prison. When he gets out, Kamurosho is different. There's the new Millennium Tower. Nishikiyama is now a family patriarch and Yumi is missing. On top of that, 10 million yen has been stolen from the Tojo clan and some little girl has been running around the city alone looking for her mother. I won't spoil too much, but I wanted to talk about the relationship between Kiryu and Nishikiyama and why it makes the game as great as it is. Kiryu would be the best character to start out with. From the very beginning, everyone has so much respect for him. Even if no one knows what he looks like, everyone knows the name, the Dragon of Dojima. Even after killing a patriarch, all that happens to him is one measly murder attempt in prison and expulsion from the Tojo clan. If anything, people respect him more after that. Shimano alludes to this when talking with Nishikiyama. In fact, things were lined up for him after he got out too. Nishikiyama was supposed to take him into his family for one thing. And when things changed, he received a message to go to Club Shine for more help. Kiryu got so much respect from the beginning because he's so determined and powerful. The only L he took in this entire game was going to prison. I mean, he also found out that Yumi got married to another dude because she forgot about him for a little bit, but I mean, like, that's a whole different thing, and I'm like, you know? Kiryu wins constantly throughout this game, even when the odds are stacked against him. The reason for this is because of his attitude towards everything. He has the high rank and the respect, but he doesn't go around flaunting it. He only tells people who he is when they ask. Aniki, Kiryu te, ano, Okay.
that's that's me. Call me. We can talk more about it. He doesn't use his fame to get what he wants. If he wants something, he works for it. He's extremely humble. The game literally starts with Kiryu going with his friend Shinji on a mission that's beneath him. Shinji feels bad for bringing him along and Kiryu just says, bro, it's whatever. A guy tries to fight him and he still doesn't tell him who he is. It's not until after the fight that Majima tells the guy who he picked a fight with. After the guy apologizes, what's Kiryu say? Dude, I mean shit happens, you know I mean? Like it's, it's not a deal. Then defends the guy. You really don't see people defend the people who try to hurt them often. At least not like this. Kiryu is just a good guy. He sees this guy as weak compared to him and doesn't feel like he really deserves to get hurt. Kiryu can do so much because he believes in himself. And if there's something he can't do, he learns how to do it until he knows how to. But what about Nishikiyama? There's a reason I chose to talk about Kiryu before Nishikiyama. A part of it is because I want you all to understand where Kiryu comes from and how he starts off at the beginning of the game. I want you all to understand it because, with the story shown in this game, Kiryu and Nishikiyama have the same backstory. Again, I haven't played Yakuza 0 yet, so I don't know if what I'm about to say is accurate with what the prequel added, but based off of what has been shown in Yakuza 1, Kiryu and Nishikiyama grew up together and saw each other as brothers up until Dojima's death. Even with the same upbringing, the two are completely different. Where Kiryu is calm and collected under tense situations, Nishikiyama gets scared and is afraid. The fact that Kiryu was so calm when he found Nishikiyama in front of his boss's corpse while Nishikiyama was trembling speaks volumes. Nishikiyama didn't know what to do, but Kiryu made a decision within a heartbeat. While Kiryu is in jail, Nishikiyama starts to work harder. Becoming a family patriarch within a year, things start to look good for him, but his sister's treatment comes up and he doesn't have the money for it. Losing his cool, he takes his first opportunity he can to fix the problem. The doctor tells him he needs 30 million yen so he can find a donor on the black market. He immediately agrees. Nishikiyama then goes to his men, who don't really respect him, and begs them to get the money for him. Eventually they do, but the means in which they get the money is not up to par with the Tojo family's code of honor. His men hustle into neighboring family territory, making him look bad, and people begin to think he lets his men walk all over him. Because he does. Nishikiyama then gets the money he needs, but there's a catch. He realizes that the last of the money he gets is from his doctor. In fact, it's the exact same amount he requested for the treatment. It turns out his doctor owed the Tojo clan gambling debts, and swiggled Nishikiyama into getting the money for him. Nishikiyama is so weak that he paid this man's debts for him. His sister never gets the treatment, and she soon dies. On top of that, everywhere he went, he would be compared to Kiryu. Kiryu wouldn't act like this. Kiryu should be here instead. If Kiryu were here, we wouldn't be in this situation. People all say this to him, because they are right. This is the difference between the two. Kiryu is responsible and hardworking, whereas Nishikiyama isn't. If there's a job to do, Kiryu would do it himself. The job with Shinji is a great example of that. Nishikiyama, on the other hand, begs his men to do the work for him. It should be noted that when he's first introduced, all that's stated is that he's from the Dojima family. No long ass titles like Kiryu. He's not good enough to have one. He also doesn't learn from his mistakes. When he finally loses it, he may have climbed the ranks, he pushes everyone away in the process and loses the morals he has at the start of the game. Whereas, Kiryu spends 10 years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit, and it humbles him even more, pushing him to leave the life he lived behind and become a better person. At the end of the game, the two beat one last time. Kiryu only wants things to finally end, but Nishikiyama wants to kill him. I wanted to bring this up because it's honestly hard to watch. This man lost a decade of his life for his best friend who is now trying to kill him. They even do the whole anime thing, where the two characters with a past relationship are hitting each other, and there's flashback images cut in between. This really has nothing to do with anything, I just really like shit like this. But this fight has everything to do with who they are. When I saw this fight, I didn't just see Kiryu fighting his brother. I saw a man fighting his past. Nishikiyama represented everything Kiryu was, but also everything he could've become if he didn't go to prison. At the start of the game, he's an intimidating man. At the end, he still is, but not as aggressive. He just wants the fighting to stop. Nishikiyama let the violence and crime around him consume him and become the worst thing possible, losing his morals in order to gain control. Kiryu let his life crumble because he believed his friends would be safe. This is not only good writing, but also extremely good character development, and is one of the reasons Yakuza 1 is such an amazing game. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I haven't been into video games as much as I used to. Gameplay wise, a lot of games haven't been that great and narratives haven't either. But Yakuza Kiwami delivered on both. 
Also stated earlier, this game is a remake of the original, and I'm honestly impressed by how cinematic it was, especially the original. Going back and watching the old cutscenes, they're beat for beat the same thing. I personally love when games are cinematic, and this game is one of the best. If you haven't played this game, I really think you should, especially if you enjoyed weird shit, because there's a lot of weird shit in this game.